Welcome to Smosh Mouth. I'm Shane. And I'm Amanda. And today is a little different than usual. We have no guests. We have no guests. It's just us. It's just us. And I want to start doing this a little more often. Or just every every now and then. It's a little bit of a checkpoint. Yes. A little bit of a check-in. Mm-hmm. Just, just us talking about whatever we want. Kind of doing some reflection. Yeah. Talking about uh, the responses from, from y'all who've been listening and watching. Talk about what we want to do in the future on this show. Talk about this show. And uh, what's been going on in our lives. And exactly. Everything. Amanda, how have you been? I've been so good. I've been very peaceful. I have been on a horror movie kick. Yeah? I... <laughs> how many horror movies have you watched recently? Well, I'm basically almost done with the Insidious okay. um, movies. I'm basically... People, friends who have told me not to watch specific horror movies years ago, I'm watching. Okay. I don't know why. But it feels, I feel very proud of myself. I guess it is the season. It is the season. I, the only horror movie I've watched this year is Talk to Me, which have you seen? Of course. So good. So good. What's the scariest shit you've watched recently, though? Honestly, the Insidious series really? are really scary. I've seen the first one where it's got that that face that appears behind it. Yes. That's, that's one of the scariest moments in all of movies. Yes. Well, they get scarier. Really? Yeah, they get really. I yeah. thought th- I thought they had like, I thought they weren't good. They, they have horrible views, uh, horrible reviews. But it's, they're good. But they're scary. I find them to be really bad scary. movies with scary parts or overall. I think that they're great. Okay. Because they follow the medium. They follow her like origin story. Yeah, they've got like fifteen movies by this point. Those <laughs> yeah, two, that good. whole universe, because you've got the, the Insidious stuff, mm-hmm. right? The Conjuring. Is the con- conjuring is part of Insidious, or is it a different thing? Actually, I think it's a different thing. I think Insidious is its own thing, and then Conjuring is Conjuring Annabelle the Nun. Is all that's all that's one same. universe where they also are the, those main people are also in. Yes, correct. That's so confusing. That's why it's confusing. Is it the same couple? No, it's it's the same dad. It's the same dad, Patrick Wilson. It's the same yeah. actor. Yeah. But it's not the same dad. It's not the same guy. It's not the same character. It's the same actor. It's the same actor. So I've been feeling really good. <laughs> yeah. So I'm freaked the f*** out. It feels good. It feels good for me to like go past my fears. But what I realize is I have to keep a nightlight on now. Funny. Funny. For bed. But yeah, I've been feeling good. How are you? I am doing pretty good. Yeah? I'm doing pretty good, actually. I, I had my birthday recently, and it was really great it was really great and i kind of dread my i don't dread my birthday Mm. but i just don't i get a little stressed from it why because i hate having to organize something oh yeah and i i realize it's always a little bit of a reflecting moment for me because i realize the negative thoughts in my head and it's not that i think people hate me but it's that i'm like ah they're, they're gonna be people they're going to be bored or they're going to think I'm weird or they don't want to actually hang out or all these dumb thoughts. And, you That's know, I ended up wild. just I ended up just kind of being like, oh, well, we're going to meet up at this place after work on Friday. And, you know, a lot of people went and it just was a really great time. And mm-hmm. I, uh, you know, it's it's one thing to like, oh, uh, yeah, I felt a lot of love that night. But it's also what I think makes me feel good is when I recognize how much I care about the people in my life like that's where my joy comes from yes and i i was really feeling that that night and i i i i've i've been struggling with this a little bit this year of i'm really bad at kind of putting in making the effort or like reaching out to people and Mm -hmm. and keeping connections going um it comes from a place of fear it comes from a place of well i i shouldn't reach out or uh, they don't they're gonna be uh, or or if I forget to text someone back the next day, I go. They're gonna be so mad at me, and 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 so I end up not, and I end up. I, I it, this sounds extreme, and it's this isn't fully the case, but I feel like I distance myself from everyone sometimes mm. by accident, and then I I you know I can that can result in me feeling a little alone, mm-hmm. but all it takes is the reminder of, oh yeah, I can reach out to people anytime, and I and all it takes is that doing it and and just talking to people and reminding myself that people care about me and I care about them. Mm-hmm. And then I then I feel great. 
But uh, isn't it funny that birthdays bring up all of that? Oh, dude. Why it's like birthday is supposed to be a celebration, but always it's like a time of reflection. Like it's like okay. What do I want to do this year? Right. How am I feeling this year? Right. Who do I want to hang out with? And it is such a social game where it's actually just about you. Yeah. And I think I think the pressure is that people – it's like with weddings, right? People put this pressure on like, oh, it's your birthday. You must see everyone you know and love and care about <laughs> yeah, you, on that day. It and feels you like must, a job. And you must entertain them. Yeah. And But to me, it's like – it is. It, it can be a really cool check in to be like, oh, who is in my life right now? Who has stuck around? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like also my favorite birthdays sometimes are, well, my favorite birthday tradition is just doing karaoke with everyone, because I'm like, for me, I have to have an event that people will enjoy, mm. that people will get something out of it. Yeah. As well, but I also love leaving town. Yeah, man. I straight up love just that sounds great. going away and getting the texts. And then it's like, all right, I got the text messages. But do you remember when Facebook was really big? Oh, that was how I knew about people's birthdays for the <laughs> longest time. I'm really bad with dates, so I forget. Uh, Same. I, I, it's not that I forget someone's birthday. I forget what day it is. I'm not kidding. I forget the date. Yeah. I, I know what I have to do this week. I know what I have to do tomorrow, but I'm not paying attention to the number yep. sometimes. So I, I, I'll sometimes be like, oh, shit, it's the 30th? Oh, God. Like, you know, <laughs> and that happens all the time to me. But anyways, Facebook. I forget birthdays, too. Facebook was but a godsend remember, for the time. Yeah, but remember when it was your birthday and you had like 150 comments on your wall? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Relatively, Happy yeah. birthday. Happy birthday from people that you're like, I don't People you'd never met. Know you. And so <laughs> okay, Parker. Uh, <laughs> cool, man. Thanks. It's like, happy birthday. Or then like your, or people that are your family will write like really long, serious things on your wall. And you're like, okay, thanks. <laughs> Did you have family members who would write not understanding that it's public? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I I, I, I I missed your call and I wish that we connected <laughs> more. And your mom and I are, you know, we're not we're not in a good place, but I <laughs> I want to wish you a happy birthday. And I'm like, okay, uh well what's good is my aunts have figured out like, oh, Messenger is really cool. Yeah. Because it's private. Yeah. But like, I don't know what it is. Maybe this is every family, but I feel like my family specifically will just talk. There's no filter there. They that's they know it's public, and they in fact they probably are like this better. Be Your public. mom and I haven't been speaking, and I'm like, do you think she's gonna? I know she's reading this right now. <laughs> Listen to me, you piece of shit. <laughs> Facebook Hit me older up. generation is yeah. just. How have you been feeling about this podcast? Okay, this podcast brings me so much joy. Yeah. A, because I get to hang out with you and get to know you better. And it's really fun because <laughs> don't do that. I'm oh like, no, oh, I'm taking cool. that off for chance where he goes, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, but it's like I've I've always known you as like Shane, right? Like, yeah. okay, you're in this video with Shane, he's hosting or whatever. Now I get to like know you on a different level. And I feel like since you and I are, you know, producing this and like thinking about topics, we get to just like connect and be creative which is super fun mm -hmm. it's also such a creative outlet too like we we bring sketches we we think about what's going on in our life yeah i love it what's so cool about it too is that there has been truly no one telling us what to do with this podcast no. so everything you've listened to or seen on this has been purely us. you and i being like what if we did that mm-hmm uh, we finally got a sign. Oh my God! It How did we great. not address this immediately? We, we ordered it forever ago, like truly well over a month ago, probably two months ago, and it just took a long time to get made. Yeah, it did. I wanted it's to, huge. I wanted to talk about just how mon not mundane, how just silly every step of the process of this podcast has been. Yes, because we we were like trying to figure out 
what, should we keep this podcast as Smoshcast? What, yeah. should, what are we what are we doing with this? What, what's going on? So we kind of I I hit up like Ian and Anthony and and I was like, can we set like a meeting and actually talk about this podcast? Yes. So we got a bunch of people together and we were talking about it and. You know, at the time they had flashback coming onto this channel. Yeah, and Which so is now so on the Smosh. Yeah, channel. so at the time it was like, oh, they're bringing flashback over to the Smoshcast channel. So we should change Smoshcast so it's not named Smoshcast. So to it's Amanda and Shane. Not not confusing. So we're like, let's figure out a name. And I forget who said it, but someone we were throwing out just names. We're trying to figure out what sounds good. We wanted Smosh to be in the title, and someone said Smosh Mouth. Was it, it Brittany? I. It might have been. I forget. I forget. We will. We can. We can. We'll credit. We'll it. credit it. But we said that in a meeting, and we that got said, and we all just kind of laughed. We're like, "That's silly. That it sounds good. Smosh mouth. It makes sense with the podcast. Yeah. I understand. There's there's similarities and references there. Being honest, that wasn't the reason for no, it. It wasn't. Uh, it was just because we we're like, that's funny. We sounds talk funny. It's smosh. Yeah. Smosh mouth. Yes. Of course, it has similarities, but. <laughs> Uh, that's also funny to us. And so we're like, okay, what we should do is we should kind of throw it out there and we should make it sound like it's an inside joke. Very I'm not kidding. This was our plan. <laughs> and so it was in the episode and and Jackie, like a pro, oh. she threw it out there because we talked to her beforehand. We're like, yeah, we're changing the name to Smosh Mouth, but we're going to be very subtle about it. And then she said it so casually in there and we were like, oh, pretty good. And we then kept the ball rolling. I think and Noah also said it too. I think when we were like deep in conspiracies, Noah was, Noah was like, Smosh Mouth. And we were like, oh. Oh. Uh oh. Everyone's just such good actors around here. They're so good. And uh, yeah, and now we have it, have this. I mean, look, you can comment down below if you have a, a better title idea. True. Shamanda. You know, once, once again, zero rules here. We did get a sign though. So. So so we we live here now. We have invested a little bit in this name. We we invested a lot. Oh yeah, this name is invested, but I would say what was fun about this name is we were thinking about pictures for us and yeah. remember we were going to do just portraits and then the big mouth filter. <laughs> Someone said that. <laughs> now we were like, okay, I guess we could have just gigantic mouths. What we ended up with though, and this was very much your idea, was going with the Sonny and Cher vibe. Yes. And it I think it really it really matches. I got you, babe. Yeah. I think because I don't know why we were like very into 60s or 70s. It just feels like this podcast is we're in our living room and we're hanging yeah. out and like come on in, let's chat. Just no chill. judgment and then go. I think I think you and I have a bit of a I think we have like vintage vibes to yes. us too. I I'm Retro. by the day I look like the the old school brawny man nowadays. <laughs> oh my god! I really do. do. I look like the old school brawny man. Here, check it out. Yeah, can we pull up a clip of the old school brawny man? Luke, throw it up right next to me. <laughs> the old school one, the blonde guy. I know they have the newer guy. It's so yeah. You are so him. You're a paper towel man. I'm paper towel man. What so wait, can I then say? what am I? Am I Cher. Cru Crusader? From <laughs> 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 Remember my funeral? That roast. I'm so proud of that roast that you have the haircut of a... 13th? Uh, uh, what century? 13th century Crusader, I think I said. Oh, my God. Uh, pretty proud of I it. I look back and my bangs have just, grown Just up. kidding. No, you don't look like that. You look like the berries and cream guy. It's the berries... <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay, no. pull it up. Okay, what what should I'll I pose? The, I'll show you the berries and cream yeah, guy. Yeah, and then I'll pose as it so he can pull it up next to me. Okay. Oh god, this is Hold gonna, on, you're going to love this. this you're going to you're going to love horrific. this. I've got it right here. Got it. Okay, fuck off. <laughs> and you thought cat in the hat was bad. <laughs> First of all, Amanda, how are you doing? Uh, Let me do the face. <laughs> Have you never seen that commercial? No. You've never seen Berries and Cream? No, but should we play it? We are going to watch Berries and Cream after this. It is. It kind of looks the like best. Bill Hader. It's a little Bill Hader vibes. So when I like when I look back on old videos of my haircut, I'm like, oh my god. Like, what was I thinking? This is the thing. Honestly, I'm happy. But You pull off the haircut, but a lot of silly people out in the world have your haircut. 
that's okay. That makes it more impressive that you pull it off. Well, I think I think nostalgically, <laughs> the berries and cream guy is so. <laughs> Look, dude, it's the best. It is arguably the best commercial of all time. Okay, I'm gonna have to watch it. I don't know how you missed this. I. It was played in movie theaters. Oh, maybe I did. See it. It's the one where it's. Also, why is he so colonial? Like, you know, we don't is... we don't need to watch it. I'm just gonna explain to you berries and cream because I can. It's ingrained in my millennial mind. Ex explain. Two guys are are eating Skittles, and it's the berries and cream flavor Skittles that they had, and they're like, "Oh yeah, it tastes like, it tastes like berries." And all of a sudden, this guy appears, and he's just like, "He's like berries. Did you say berries?" What? And they're like, "Yeah, and, and it tastes like berries." He's like, "And and and what else?" And they're like, "Cream." And then he goes into this song and dance where he's like, "Berries and cream, berries and cream. I'm a little lad who loves berries and cream." What? And then he does like a jump high kick and nearly kicks one of them in the face, and that's it. It's it's stellar. It's a stellar. Wait, it's commercial. me. It's me. It's truly you. the amount of times I kick. Yeah. And it hits something. I hope I don't get copyright struck for that song. I don't think I will. If we do, that would be truly so funny. <laughs> I um, don't care. Then the, we don't the care. The thing is, our parents are gone. We are left alone <laughs> in this house. Nobody cares what we do. do nobody Shane. cares. Um, uh, anyways. Anyways. Going back, this podcast has been great. You know something? So we've done so many different things, and I still we're still testing out different stuff. Yeah. And I'm yeah. really enjoying that. Um, you know, we've we've written sketches, yep. we've read our notes app, we've talked about things in the past. We we've done all sorts of stuff. I want to keep doing new things, mm -hmm. but something that I feel like has been an underlying theme, and I've seen a lot of comments about it, is that it's been borderline a motivational podcast for people. Totally. In a much more humble manner. Right, like yeah. we're not we're not a motivational podcast. We're not here being like, here, get up. You need to wake up at five a.m., take a cold shower, and and start thinking about your business no. at six a.m. No, we're we're talking about just general motivation, and we're talking about it from a personal place. We're like, uh, we are like, I, that's what I feel like. Sunny and Cher, without us even knowing we were that, is I got you, babe. Is kind of mm -hmm. like I got you. Whatever's yeah. going on, I believe in you. Yeah. That's what it feels like. It naturally came to, which. Yeah. But but I feel like we do it in such like a funny, in well, a real honest but funny manner. Because I feel like you and I look at life very similar. And like, oh man, like even the dark shit, we're just like, that's funny. Like, you know. Yeah, I, you know what I also think it is in my mind. Um, a lot of motivation is about the outcome. It's like motivation for. Here's how you achieve this thing. Here's how you get this thing you want. Yeah. And I I think we talk a little bit more. About about motivation as a means of here's how you motivate yourself to do what you love. Here's totally. here that thing you want to do. Here, like do it, and and I think that's for us because the the writing stuff. It's not about well, I want to. We we're trying to become successful writers. It's oh, I, I enjoy writing, so why don't I do it? And I know it's how like, do I push myself to do that? Yeah, and I think a lot of people can relate in that we all have things we just want to do that we know will bring us joy, but we are afraid to take that plunge. Exactly. But once, so how do you motivate yourself to take that plunge and then enjoy life? Yeah, I I, I agree with that completely. I feel like I have people message me on Instagram being like, you know, I loved the podcast episode about inspiration or reading your notes app because it's like, I feel like it's, as a person, it's so hard to motivate yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't stand that's like, well, I booked a, I booked a, a, a small little Airbnb and, in the hills of Ireland, and I'm going to write a script. It's like, okay, well, good. Yeah, I'm glad great. if you can do that. But I can't. And I need, I think the first step of motivation is just like getting myself there. Yeah. Whether it's like getting myself in the seat and writing a page, you have to celebrate that. And I feel like on this podcast, we start that. We mm. like ignite it, right? We're like... We yeah. give ourselves tasks to do it. I, I definitely so we do it. I've been using this podcast selfishly as a means of motivating myself. Yeah, because uh, I know I'm like, well, I have to, I have to talk about the thing. I have to do the thing. Yeah. So you know, we we disguise that with Angela and with Olivia as, hey, we're gonna get you to write something. But truly, deep down, it's for I us. knew it was for me, and it was so much fun. And I want to find more ways of doing that. 
Um, speaking of motivation and goals, mm -hmm. something that I know fans are very curious about, uh -huh. and I wanted to save it for here. At the beginning of, well, so let me give some backstory on this. For the past four years, every New Year's, I post something about how uh, I'm going to do the splits <laughs> that year. That's always my goal. Wow. Every year, I'm going to do the splits. And it has been a lifelong goal of mine because I've just been like, it must it must feel cool. It, it's funny. <laughs> it, it's such a cool thing to be able to do the splits. Um, so every year for the past four years, I've been like, I'm going to do it. And, and I, it's a little bit of a joke, but there was always a great truth to it of, I do genuinely want to do this. All I need to do is stretch every day and I could make a lot of progress towards it. So this year I was, I was so legitimately determined and I posted all sorts of shit. Oh yeah. I posted on TikTok. It's like my last post on TikTok. I just uh, see you as this with your yeah, legs, like I was so there. dead serious about it, and I'm being honest here. I have been stretching consistently all year, so I'm gonna answer the question: Can I do the splits? And the answer is no. No. <laughs> um, no. But I want to tell you guys about the journey to where I'm at now. I started this year off. I stretched every day and i was doing like a splits like beginners Stretch. like like getting into the splits uh, you know if you do this if you do this 90 day program you'll do the splits at the end of it so i started it Stop. and i was doing that every day i did that for months i want to say uh, it was up until up until may i stretched every day very consistently Good. like every single day and uh, I still, I made progress, but I didn't make the progress that I was, I think, in my head, I thought. Which is a, a part, of, which is, in my mind, looking back, it's a downside. Deadlines are great to just motivate yourself, but deadlines can be very detrimental. Yes, because then if, it's like, I didn't do it, I'm a failure. If, and, then it's, and then you're done. And that, that's what kind of happened to me, is oh. I, got, I got into June, and I had been doing it every day, and I was like, I'm not going to be able to do this. And I, and I think it just, it was that... Plus, it was, I think, summer gets really busy for us and Anthony coming back. And I think I truly lost focus. Mm -hmm. And then what happened was I had one week where I stopped consistently doing it. I went from doing it every single day. Oh my every God. single day. And then I just kind of dropped off entirely. Because as soon as I fell off a couple days, I just fell off. And then and you I, didn't see progress. And you're like, and then I And then I had negative progress because I didn't stretch for like, um, I didn't stretch consistently for like a month or two. Yep. And then it it kind of reverted. I wouldn't say it reverted all the way back, but it you know I I then was like oh shit, because simultaneously because I'm a psycho, I've also <laughs> been uh, working out harder than ever. And oh, I'm, and so I'm so and I'm trying to, to I'm splits. trying to gain I'm trying to gain muscle weight as well, and I have gained like ten pounds this year, and nice. so I'm doing that as well. But of course, it's super counter to being flexible because I like. You know, I'm doing squats and deadlifts, and of course, it's gonna make it hard to. There's no way you're gonna flexibility. be able. To... Are you sp are you trying to split so the wide way? So both. Or... I was I was doing both, but side splits are taking forever for me. That's because they're you're so hard. So much muscle. Side splits are so tough. What's also tough for me is getting. I also think people underestimate how unflexible I was at the start of this year. So mm -hmm. I know. I I am, and I think it's genetic too, because I've had family members talk about this. We're we're built like a, a friggin' rock, like we don't move. Our body does not move, <laughs> and so at the beginning of this year, I couldn't, I could hardly do anything, and I have made a lot of progress. It just doesn't look like what a normal person's progress would probably look like. But I want to say, in regards to motivation and stuff, is I set on this goal to do the splits by summer, and I didn't achieve that. But I am more flexible than I've ever been. And it just, it's not like I'm super flexible, but it's that I feel better than ever. See? I feel so good. My legs, I, I used to, I, I didn't stretch for oh, most of my life. God, no. And uh, there were days and, you know, people who work here, who worked here back in like 2015 to 2018 talked about it. Uh, they, they would tell me occasionally, like they could tell when I'd been working out a lot, because I like I had a hard to, like I, I sometimes like truly was just not in yeah. pain, but my legs were just so tight. Yeah, that I, it was it was tough. Um, and so now I have so much more mobility, 
and I feel awesome. And I, I will say here on this podcast, I'm not giving up. I'm still very determined to try to get as far as I can this year. Kimmy actually was the one who got me for my birthday. She got me this awesome like stretcher thing that that helps like you can you know how like um, is it like a resistant band? It's it's kind of complicated, but it helps you do the splits. It's this cool like it's this cool device. Um, it's a very simple device, but it helps like kind of hold your you, you're in a sitting position. And also, what happened? If I this is an excuse, but also something that happened was I did semi injure my knee in trying to do the splits because I was doing it from the standing position middle splits. No, I was trying, and I know, I know no. every, I know so many comments would be like, Shane, why were you doing that? It's because no. I'm lazy, and that was the no. easiest way to go about it. And yeah, I'm putting too much weight on my knees, and it's just a bad place. So then someone was like, oh, you should do it uh, up against a wall. Of course. So I started doing that, and that did feel better, but it was still like inconvenient. I don't really have uh, space for that where I live, and so this is this is perfect. And I've I've now been doing this every day, and. I'm going to hopefully, but I will also say my goals are a little different now because now I realize that the benefit ultimately of stretching is just feeling better. And I don't need to do the splits to have that you benefit. You just keep that. But I want to do the splits. I, I really am going to keep on trying. I think it's hard for me to give a timetable because clearly my body, don't. You, you, everybody's body works differently, but I will... Do give I will give more updates on this show. Not going to give it other places. It's just going to be here. That's that's special to hear because this that's my can ask, journey. Can I ask you? Are you from someone who can almost do a split? And I am very tall. And when I was sixteen, I couldn't even touch my toes. Wow! But I've been doing yoga since I was 16. Oh, see, uh, my hamstring flexibility is great now. Can I ask you, are you doing deep hip stretches? Uh, so, yeah, I uh, I sit in like the, or I do the standing like the squat position. I do that a lot. Like I'll watch TV while I'm like, you know, where I, I like you're in a standing position. Then you just squat down and like you have your elbows to your knees, the inside of your knees. Okay. And I, I'm just there. And I'll just sometimes watch TV from that position. It's hard. I tend to fall back. See, but you're building you're building muscle. You're not fully doing it. It's deep. very. It's I feel, I feel the stretch. I'm I feel the stretch. I'm gonna show you some okay. stretches that are gonna open. There's that also shit what's the up. what's the one? Um, frog. Frog pose. I do Woo! I do some of that. I'm doing. I'm, I'm stretching. Okay. I'm stretching. Okay. I'm telling you, okay. I've made progress. Good. I, I feel good. You. Good. You can almost do the splits. Yeah. Which one? Uh, side splits? Uh, side split almost. And then front splits? My favorite thing to do is go up against the wall and put your butt up against the wall and then, right? Like have right. your legs out and you have to hold it there for two minutes. Oh, I've been doing that. So you I, hold it there for two minutes, but I can almost do the forward split. So I, I, did, a, I did a show last night. And I did. I pitched this massage therapist who kept slipping on oil on this guy's back. So dumb, <laughs> so dumb. But I literally was just supposed to like slick off the oil because she basically falls asleep because the music's so relaxing. I slick off the oil and I'm supposed to just slip. But last night there was so much water and oil that I on stage was doing splits without realizing it. God. And all I was thinking was. Whoa, I can almost do a split. That's so insane. That <laughs> how, how often are you doing that stretch? So I do, my workouts are, I do a lot of Muay Thai. Right. Which is straight up hip opening. Okay. So Muay Thai is, it's not boxing. It's literally it's twist, legs. turn, and, well, you are doing a bunch of punches. Right. But it's a lot of hip opening. So cool. I do so many hip openers. It's badass. And then I do yoga. And my main, and then I'll do Pilates. And my main stretches will literally be like a psoas stretch, pigeon, okay. frog. Great. And then I'll do butterfly and okay. lean over. Pretty cool. And you have to stay in them for at least a minute or two. It's the amount of time you stay in them that really helps. Okay. And the only thing is, you have to be very relaxed, otherwise it won't relax and open. 
Okay. You have to open it up, babe. All right. Well, look, I'm gonna keep working on it. I'm keep gonna try. On it. I'm gonna try. Uh, in December, we can do like, we can sh- we can actually look at the progress. I'll I'll do because right you. now, if I did it, it would it's it, it's more than I think than before, but it's not the splits. So <laughs> it's just not. Uh, and I I'm in, I'm owning up to it. I'll do. But it I you. I did try. You did a great... I am trying. Yeah, see, that's I'm all I'm still going. And I most years, all these past years, I just stopped entirely. But I've been very consistent, and I'm going to keep on going. I'm feeling good. There's a lot of stretches that, like, dude, I can pretty much touch my palms to the floor from the, with a, like... See, I feel like that's all stretch. that matters is, like... I've gotten more... Do it and get better. I got flexible in other ways, more so than the, the splits, and it's pissed me off that I'm like, like oh. where? I just mean literally, like, like from, from a standing position leaning down to the floor. I oh, can, yeah. It takes years. I know, I know. I was I was greedy. You but, greedy little. But I'm gonna use uh, anyways. I'm gonna use this this podcast to motivate myself, and I hope people listening and and watching like comment, you know, comment the things that you're. And this Working isn't on. this isn't like motivation. Like I want to make a million dollars. I think it's more motivation. No. Like like I want to get into pottery. It's like that's the type of stuff I want to motivate uh-huh. people to do the things they love, and just do it for the enjoyment of it. That's the type of motivation I think I want to try to push here. I love that. And then and then we can do another check-in episode and kind of read people's comments. I think, yeah, I would love – so we talked about it for this episode. And we realized it kind of before we started recording. But yeah. I think in maybe – in a few episodes from now when we do this again, I think we will have compiled a bunch of our favorite comments um, – I'm almost in my head. I'm like, I'll give out certain types of awards, like Ooh. best, most most inspiring comment, uh, yeah. most funniest comment. Yeah, we're gonna read them. Dumbest comment. Dumbest comment. Oh, p- like possible pitches. I would Ooh. love character pitches personally for moi. Yeah, throw and maybe out some I pitches. could do them. We could do them on TNTL. Yeah, and uh, pitches for future episodes. Which also, I wanted to kind of talk about that. Yeah, we need to. We literally just are coming up with them on the fly a lot. I mean, we do brainstorm a little bit. And sometimes we think about the guest and be like, oh, yeah. like for Call Me Chris, you know, we were like, okay. Characters. Characters. And for our talk about our For You pages. Yeah, yeah. Tommy. Yeah. Um, but yeah. future episode pitches, that would be good. Mm-hmm. I had one. Oh, I just wrote down starting beefs. If If... Because I feel like a lot of podcasts oh, I love have it. beefs with people, so maybe we could, for one episode, we could just try to start beefs with others. You know when you have a hair just, like, everywhere, and you're like, there's a hair on my back. Where the f*** is it? What? Anyways. <laughs> um, did you get this? Where if the you, f- it, Shane, Where is it? If you had long hair, you should grow out your hair. But if you had long hair, you would understand. You'd be I like, know. you'd be walking, then you'd be like, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is the hair? My hair at one point. It's in my asshole. My hair at one point was almost as long as yours. What? Shut up. When I was a teenager. (gasps) That's so cool. It was pretty long for a bit. It sucked though. It it didn't look good. It I no matter what I did, it would part fully down the middle and I looked like Prince Charming. And it would it would like (laughs) flip up at the end. It was insane. Like Lord Farquaad? It was uh, not Lord Farquaad. It was it was more like the Prince Charming type of hair. But if you cut it like this, hear me out, Backstreet Boys. Don't know why I'm listening to Backstreet Boys right now, but if you cut it like this, like Nick Carter. Okay. Okay. You're saying I should get the Nick Carter haircut. (laughs) Yeah. No. Okay. I would get made fun of. What? By who? Everyone. Good. I can already tell Brennan over there is just like, oh, that would be awesome. He'd make fun of me every day. (laughs) No, it would look so good. No. It looks so great. No. Hey, the nineties are coming back. In sync is getting back together. Are they officially getting back together? Yes. Holy shit. They called me and they were like, hey, we want you to announce it on Smosh Mouth. And I was like, guys. I, I saw it. Well, no, I, I I saw a TikTok with all of them last night. Yeah. Okay, so this is real. This is real. Holy shit. This is real news. So uh I'm pitching. Or sorry, sorry. No, I saw you're saying Backstreet Boys. I No, I'm saying in sync. Okay, in sync. Didn't I say in sync? Okay, yeah, I got confused because Backstreet Boys have been together. Yeah, they've been together. They're they're doing the Vegas thing. Yeah, we're thing. fine. Fuck them. Yeah. Uh, in sync though, pretty pretty sick. Yeah. Um, in sync. Anyways. Anyways, so this podcast pretty pretty awesome. 
Yes. Pretty cool. Has it changed how you listen to other podcasts? Oh, yeah. I feel like now I'm listening to podcasts with like, ooh, I like what they're doing there. And ooh, I don't like what they're doing there. Because, <laughs> okay, <laughs> Oprah, I love her. <laughs> I okay, love her. Oprah. I love her. And Our o first beef Oprah, with Oprah. If, yeah, beef. Good. <laughs> yeah. Oprah, if you are listening, and if we do a beef episode, I just want to do a little beef with other podcast hosts. Um, but Oprah, I listen to her episode, uh, her podcast all the time. Um, but she interrupts her guests all the time. Really? Oh, all, all the time. They'll be like in the middle of like something so beautiful. It'll be like Deepak, and she's like, so Deepak. Anyway, so she's just. <laughs> wait, wait. It's not even like talking about what they're talking about. Well, she'll interrupt with, oh, and I was, I was going for a walk, and I thought I need to be present right now, and so I got really, really present, and I was like, oh, this is me being present, and I wasn't even upset about the thing, and I'm like, Oprah, girl. Let's just go back to Deepak. <laughs> I don't know what it is. She just interrupts all the time. That's so funny. I love her. Yeah. But she interrupts her. So I was, when I listen to other podcasts, I'm thinking, oh, that's, I don't want to do that. Oh, dude, Oprah in hindsight is so funny to me. Yeah. Sometimes. I, there's something that's been stuck in my head. Let me say this really quick and then we can move on to other podcasts. But I remember, do you remember when the big, this is like, 15 years ago when the secret was big yes bro and oprah was at the 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 yes. head of the charge of the secret where it's anything you think of you will get yeah. which is an insane thing to think about nowadays like it fit dude for 2006 <gasps> that fits so well oh, people were like people have were you like, read yeah. the secret and it works <laughs> if you think about something you'll get it and, and it's I'm like, like what is the secret the, the they demo can't tell the you. demo that loved it though was like very clearly like yeah because you got everything um she had this one thing she talked about that i i cannot get out of my head and i look back and i'm like this is so funny where she was like yeah you know and they were talking someone was saying something like yeah and there's a certain level of like energy and if the more powerful it is the more like it'll be brought back and, and oprah oprah was like yeah you know it had me think about the other day I was thinking about bubbles, and I, I just was thinking about bubbles a, a whole bunch. And then I went to my my office after we were done filming, and on my desk was a little bubble maker, a, a Tiffany and Company <laughs> yes. bubble maker. And I and I and she's like, and it's just it's it's I don't know how it got there, whatever. I'm like, Oprah, you probably said, oh, I love bubbles, and one of your assistants was like, quickly, we need. Bubbles! We need to get her bubbles! We and they, they sure. fucking went to Tiffany's and they fucking melted that shit and made it in the couple hours. No, Oprah, you you didn't manifest that. You're a billionaire and you have all the power in the world. This is why I love Oprah, because she's like, I was traveling the Alps. I was in the Swiss Alps and I thought, how do I stay present? How do I stay present? And I ordered caviar and this delicious wine, and I was in my garb. And how do I stay present? And I thought, I stay present by going down the slopes in the Swiss Alps, and there were, there were bears. And it's just like, Oprah, you have a yacht with a helicopter on it. I don't know, but you have the secret. The uh. secret. That's, that's why I love Oprah, because she consistently interrupts with her, yeah, Tiffany Co. And then there was this gorgeous gold-plated Tiffany Co. bubble maker. She, she, dude, she had her demo by the fucking balls. Like, the, she, she knew exactly what to say all the time. Just lean the f*** in oh. to whatever whimsical story is on. And it's always about traveling the world. <laughs> it's when I was in France, I'm like, Oprah. God, 2006 to 2012, I think, was when that whole, like, bro, it was so bad of just, people need to get out of their life and they need to travel the world. They need to just get out there and, and go. The... The reality that we're in nowadays, the 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 way that that dialogue has changed so oh my God. much. People don't do that. Where people are like, yeah, you know, I can't afford that. Like, yeah. But back in the day, it was all the people who couldn't afford it just didn't have the ability to talk about it because we didn't have social media yet. So the only people you heard shit from were the super, super rich people super who were just rich. like, people just need to quit their job. And they need to go to Mykonos. Take the leap. Take the leap. And go to the Maldives. <laughs> go to the Maldives. 
<laughs> take the leap and go to Just India. Just figure, you know what? The money will happen. <laughs> the money will happen. If you manifest money, it will come. It will appear. In a Tiffany box. <laughs> And gold. <laughs> Bro, that's what it was. It was insane. And now podcasts are about home. It's like, yeah. you can do everything in your home. You can do everything in your home. And it's all <laughs> in you. And it's like, okay, this is clearly So you listen times. to Oprah. Who else do you listen to? Brene Brown. Who's who, Brene Brown? Brene Brown, Atlas of the Heart. I don't think uh, I know this. Oh, you don't? I, she's she's kind of a bit Southern. No, that's not her accent at all. No, 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 no. Where is she from? Where's she Houston. Houston. <laughs> she's from Texas. She's I'm from <laughs> Houston. <laughs> she's a Texas girl. But she's blonde. She did a TED Talk about vulnerability. Cool. And it was so good years ago. And all the comments were body shaming her, oh. which was awful. So you know what? She came out with like uh, another book about Dare to Lead. And, and she she's amazing. And she has amazing people on her podcast. That's awesome. And But she also likes to interrupt people. <laughs> What is it about me and interrupting? But hers are more um, less about <laughs> India and traveling. Hers are more like, what can you do now? Hers are more relational, like relationships. Atlas of the Heart is a new book about how words matter, how they hold oh. meaning, like saying you're overwhelmed versus stressed. And she also has an HBO show about Atlas of the Heart. Okay, I love her because hers is very... Um, Literary, like hers is very, like what you say, words, cool. relationship. And she likes to interrupt people with she words. She likes to interrupt people with words yeah, all the time. You go. But I'm like, Brene, let them talk. <laughs> let them talk, Brene. Let them talk. But I just like the way she's like, oh, my husband. My hu That's not her accent. I, I need to stop. But she does have a bit of, uh, you know, a southern, southern, southern drawl. Okay. But she, I love her. She's okay. amazing. So Oprah, Brene Brown. Oprah, Brene Brown. I think e we're getting a little bit of a trend. Esther Perel. Esther Perel. And I, you recommended it and I listened to it and it is pretty great. Uh, as someone who loves psychology, it's fucking awesome. Exact I think that's what it's always about for me. Yeah. For for those, it's it's where should we begin with mm -hmm. Esther Perel where she has, a, they're anonymous. Like they're anonymous. They, the, but she has a couple on every episode to do a single she's a relationship single therapist. session of of couples therapy. She's a sex therapist technically. Yeah, and it's it's intense. It, it's some of it's intense, some of it's not, but some of these couples are really in shambles and to hear them just blaming each other for a whole she's hour. Like, what you need what you need is you need to talk to each other, you need to listen to each other. What you need to do is listen. You're not having enough sex. You need to touch. And she'll like I just love the way she talks. She's amazingly insightful and she cuts through all the bullshit. Oh my God. It's so great when you have a, a, an episode of that show where a guy, someone's like, no. like, and she's just, she's not showing me any appreciation. Now, when you say that, <laughs> I want you to hear the way that you're saying that. <laughs> uh, no, so say it in your own words. Yes. Like so you, what you need from her is you're saying, hey, I need your respect. I need your communication. I yes. need your company. He's like, uh, Michelle, I need your company. Say it. Say it in your own words. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's so and fun. And then it's like, and it's just so. So there's a game too. There's a game. Oh, where you told should me. we begin? You told me. And I got it as a wedding gift. Oh shit! And then they got divorced. <laughs> they got divorced within the week. We got divorced immediately. Week. No, we took it on our mini moon, me and H, on our wedding gift, and we were reading them, and they're very like, they're very like vulnerable questions, but they're all like touch and like sex face <laughs> <laughs> and we were reading it by a pool and i'm not kidding this old man vet he had a fucking like world war ii cap yeah. he was in a hot tub he inched closer all, the whole day as we were reading these cards <laughs> he was like you mind if i pull one of those cards right there <laughs> he was like in the hot tub like kind of looking at us and we were like so name your first crazy sex experience <laughs> and i swear to he's god he's like probably back in the war <laughs> Sorry to butt in, but uh, yeah. It, it was, was a war, 1942. Battle of the Bulge, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> so good. So good. Honestly, we should bring, maybe we should bring these cards on oh, the God. podcast. But H and I were reading them, and I swear to God, by the time we were done, he was out of the hot tub, he had found a chair, and he was sitting directly behind us, just like, 
just so Mouth into it. Agape. <laughs> he was stoked for you guys' marriage. So uh, Esther Perel. See, okay. Those the, are my po- those are my main podcasts. Okay, so plus Dateline. I love obviously. I love the vibe that we get from yours because the podcast that I listen to. Oh God! And I go in and out of phases. I go through a music phase where I'm just listening to music. I go through phases where I'm listening to podcasts nonstop. Yeah. Uh, I mostly listen to podcasts when I'm working out. Uh, it's just just generally. You don't listen to music when you work out. I do listen to music. Okay, when I work but out. but sometimes I sometimes I'm just like there's no good music. Yeah. Do you ever have that happen where you're just like, there's none. I ran out. Yeah. I fucking ran out of music. I'm really listening to everything Backstreet sucks. Boys right now. Okay? This is where I'm at. Yeah. And Spotify is like, here's a playlist. I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> you suck. You do not know me. It's like, you listened to a soundtrack of a movie five years ago. Here's all of it. Garden right? State soundtrack. Yeah. I'm like, like, I don't want this. Stop. So the podcast that I listen to, when I listen to podcasts, <laughs> I wrote down a few of them. I'd probably say my favorite podcast is this one called Hardcore History. And it's this one dude, this one guy. He's a huge history buff. Um, and uh, uh, Carlin, uh, what's his name? Um, what's his name? Does anyone know? Uh, George Carlin. Uh, it's what is it? What? It? Dan Carlin. So, uh, hardcore history oh, is boy. probably my favorite. It's hosted by this guy named Dan Carlin. He's just this. This just. He sounds insane. Is what's great, and his episodes he he posts like one, one episode a year, but they're like what? <laughs> but they're like five to eight hours long of him just talking, and he does deep dives into historical events. So he'll be talking about oh, he'll have an eight hour episode all about Julius Caesar's conquests in uh, the British Islands, and and here's how he talks. This is how the whole thing. There's no music. Actually it, here's agree. here's him. He's just like. Now here's the thing about the Romans. Oh, Jesus. The Romans had organization, and they were fighting barbarians, people who <laughs> they fought with only with their hearts and their mind. They, they weren't thinking. What? So the Romans would show up their centurions, and the, and the barbarians had no means of understanding combat in this new modern Jesus. way. It's so There's awesome. no music? There's no music. It's just that for eight hours. Okay, this- It's this, awesome. This satisfies the TikTok trend of why are <laughs> men- How much do men think about the Roman Empire? Oh, bro. Wait, how okay. much do men think about the Roman Empire? I, I, I know th- this trend might be over by this point, but go ahead and ask me. Okay, Shane, how much do you think about the Roman Empire? Realistically, I know it comes up into my head at least once a once a week. But I will say this: I will say this. I think this is what's strange because women are talking. Women are talking about what is their version of it. <laughs> women, women have been talking, and I saw <laughs> women talking. I saw, I saw Shut one woman. I saw one woman. I saw one woman on TikTok say, "What is the woman equivalent?" And it's murder. <laughs> Like yeah, but so I also true. think I also think strangely, the woman equivalent is ancient Greece. Yes. Yeah. It is for dudes. It's Rome. It's Greek for, mythology. It's Greek but mythology. see, I think I think of Greek mythology and Greek history more than Roman history. Roman okay. history is dope, and I do love it, and I I, <laughs> I I definitely have read a lot about it. But Greek mythology and Greek history is so that sick is to me. so true. Actually, yeah. I didn't think about that. Uh, murder for sure, but I think <laughs> it's I definitely think, murder. I think Greek mythology because there's like a lot of sex, a lot of passion, and a lot of like magical, witchy, mystical. It's a things. little more, yeah. It's a little more, um, and it's probably more the mythologic mythological side. But you know, you have like plays. You have there's a lot more emotion. There's more emotion. Whereas like I ask Roman her, history is very just like. Huh. I asked my husband. <laughs> I was like, "How much do you think about?" It? He's like, "Oh, twice, twice a month, three times a month." I'm like. He watches history shows, but he also is from a different country, so he knows a lot of different history. Yeah, so Rome like is an Mesopotamia. Oh, like... I love Mesopotamia. <laughs> I love ancient history. I'm not a, actually. I, I'm not a huge history buff when it comes to like the 20th century, like World War II and stuff. I I, I find it fascinating. It's it old school. I like all history, but I love ancient history. I love. I wonder why men. Or maybe it's not just men. Why? What's the biggest like theme in ancient history that is it like about? You know, I think conquering. I think, or... No, I think. Well, I I can't speak on it f- 
fully. I can't speak for all men. Just but for you. I think for a lot of it is right now, men are in this very, um, the manosphere and the grind set mindset of so many dudes is very much like you just gotta like not not like any any feeling bad any whatever you just gotta you just gotta get up and you gotta go and you just gotta do it and it's a very st like stoicism is almost like coming back for men and which is greek but um mm -hmm. i think ancient rome was very much like it's this brutal thing and it's just yes. you just gotta forget your emotions and just go and and it's all about but it's a, a little bit about craftsmanship and Strategy. Um, strategy. It's just, I just think Is it's. Is Napoleon from I, ancient? What? No, Napoleon's uh, French. <laughs> Great. Eight, eight, 18th, 18, uh, 18, Very cool. Uh, Napoleon is 1800s France. Clearly, I think about it <laughs> all the time. I can tell you about Aphrodite, Hermes, and, and Helios, the god of the sun, but give me Napoleon. <laughs> Loved that Roman guy. <laughs> Joaquin, he was... Joaquin Phoenix is playing Napoleon in a new movie coming out, and I was like, God, ancient well, it's confusing. Rome. It's confusing because he was also an ancient Roman emperor in Gladiator. Okay, great. He was also Caligula. Oh, he was, that, I think. Was a, yeah. that was a rough role for him. I hated him. He really played the f out he of was that like, one. <laughs> he always has like shadows. Like, <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Daddy doesn't love me. <laughs> Russell Crowe, hot. Yeah. He's still hot. One of Anthony Padilla's favorite movies. Seriously? Gladiator? Gladiator? Home Alone. Home Alone 2. Oh, hell no. Those, those, are, those are Anthony's he three He doesn't favorite eat movies. his mac and cheese in Home he Alone 2, and I hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. Um, okay, so I said hardcore history. Hardcore history. Let me get these others out. Yeah. The other one I listened to. Another thing about Shane and I is we derail often. Oh. So we have to try to focus ourselves. We've been, we derail so much on this show. I have seen comments where people are like, please don't stop derailing. I oh, love really? It. Okay. They love that we talk about something new every 20 seconds. Oh, my God. No. Uh, so hard to find clips. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that. That's the last thing we'll talk about. Um, basement Yard. Have you ever heard of Basement Yard? No. You would actually love Basement Yard. Really? So it's these two East Coast dudes, and oh, they've been friends. Guardian. They've been friends since they were in like elementary school. Basement Yard. It's Great called name. Basement Yard, and it's just the two of them talking. They talk about literally nothing. I, I mean, literally, they'll just be hanging out. And the, my favorite thing about it is that every conversation is just the two of them giving each other shit, and it sounds so East Coast. I love so, it. So, for instance, this is this is how every this is how every episode goes. Listen to. Two minutes and this will happen. One of them will be like, "Hey, what's your what's your like what's your favorite kind of sandwich to have like just on a day off? Uh, probably like peanut butter and jelly. What are you a baby? <laughs> why would you why would you say a peanut butter and jelly? What what's wrong with a peanut butter and jelly? I it's the it's only the only babies eat peanut butter and jelly. You asked me what my favorite sandwich is and I said peanut butter and jelly. You answer like a but answer like an adult sandwich. Okay, fine. Uh, prosciutto and oh, don't say prosciutto. What what do you what what is that? What is that? No, that's every episode. I'm already yard. in because that is my literal life. I'm gonna have rosé, except with sisters. I'm gonna have rosé. Why are you having rosé? <laughs> I don't know. It gives you. It gives me such awful heartburn. Well, you haven't had this rosé. Well, let me try it. Well, this is a really expensive bottle. Okay. Well, let me try it. Why are you being kind of a bitch right now? <laughs> Dude, it couldn't be so much further than my life experience just living in the West Southwest. Where it's like, United you want to try that peanut butter and jelly? Good for you. All right. Okay. That is so hilarious because, uh, uh, yeah, no, I, I, yard. it's super funny. I will listen. And then uh, one How that old I, are they? they? They're probably, they're probably uh, relatively around our age. Okay, they're cool. late twenties, early thirties. Great. But name. they are, I mean, dude, every clip is that. Every clip is one of them saying something <laughs> and the other one telling them it's stupid. I love it. That's every conversation that they have. You sometimes people need to just be taken down a notch. <laughs> <laughs> and people on the East Coast do it every, every sentence. They do it every five every seconds. Every chance they get. <laughs> um, and then uh, lastly, the one that I, I haven't listened to it a bunch lately, but I was listening to it constantly. And so much so that they surprised me with this person on Try Not To Laugh 100. Uh, but therapy get Oh, I fucking love also, that. Also, I love that dude. Oh, he was so. He is that guy. He we is. We saw him in Austin, right? Uh, didn't we see him? I think we did. Yeah, yeah we saw him yeah. in Austin. So he's um he just uh is such a like listener. You've never met someone who is listening and observing you as intently as him. And he's so kind and like so open. Yeah, it, but I love that show because. He, my favorite moment from that show is he had someone prank call him. 
they called just to be like, yeah, I'm having this issue, and uh, yeah, the 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 thing is, and he said some dumb thing like, yeah, and uh, balls, 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 dick, 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 <laughs> and says that, and then therapy guy doesn't hang up. He just sits there, and then he's like, so um, what do we do now? I, and the guy was like, I I uh, I don't. That's all I had I planned. Know. He's like, why? So why did you say that? And then the guy's like. I don't know. I, was, I guess I've just been bored lately. <laughs> it's so it's so good. He's he, a perfect therapist. He's so he's so good at it. And obviously he's not a real therapist, but he's just a he's a person. He's a person. He's, he's just a, a great therapist. listener. Just a great listener. Great. Um, I love him. Person. And so every I'm a big time, fan. every time you see him, he still has green paint somewhere on his face. Oh yes, he always has a little remnant of it. He's because he's always in it. <laughs> but those are the main ones that I listen to. I I listen to you know like NPR and and news and I I like I do that. like NPR a but, lot. But those are the ones when I want to be entertained. I listen to those. And I, I I've listened to you know a lot of other YouTubers have really great podcasts. Um, Ted has his. Um, there, there's a, there's a bunch. There's a lot of those as well that I try to listen to on occasion. But. But you haven't lived unless you listen to um, NBC Dateline. Yeah. The only thing about NBC Dateline is it's not a real podcast. All they did was take the audio <laughs> from the show. And just put and it. And put it on podcast because they're like, and as you see right here, this man is walking and you're like, I can't <laughs> see. And then it'll be like clips from the interrogation and you can't hear a word they're saying. But when you're watching it, there's the they write the dialogue and they'll be like, and we're listening to the podcast and you're just like and that was the wildest thing we'd ever heard and, and you're he like, finally re- Keith Morrison and he finally revealed what he was trying to say <laughs> and you're like you're listening in the car what's, to get what's happening <laughs> but I don't stop I do not stop listening to Dateline and you know who does it too Angela we oh are- I know I we are we both will be like, hey, did you hear that episode about a uh, summer solstice? She's like, oh my god, wild! <laughs> <laughs> like we listen to it, and it's just, and it, Keith Morrison, wow, really, wow, <laughs> and there's like really weird music, and it'd be like, ding, 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 ding. and I'm like, <laughs> like weird sound clips that probably go with visuals. What the fuck? <laughs> it's just great. Um. We have Angela next week. I know. And I'm very excited for that. So I'll give you guys the inside scoop. We're doing Try Not to Laugh, the podcast. Oh, my God. Where for an hour or more, we <laughs> cannot laugh. And if you laugh, you get a little, you get a mark. We're going to keep tally of it. Whoever laughs the least amount is going to get a $20 gift card to, to their choice. a place of their choosing. Yeah, it's gonna be. Insane. It's gonna be insane. I'm prepping stuff for it. Oh, I have stories. I'm, I'm prepping a lot. I have stories for days. Um, and then uh, I'm really excited. We've got a few more minutes to talk. Yeah, and didn't we have? So we wanted to pitch. I I think we should pitch some future episode ideas. Agreed. But also, an idea I want to start doing on this show. Oh that yeah. I'm very very jazzed about. Oh yeah. So we post a YouTube short from this show mm-hmm. every episode. We try to find something like, what was the best moment? We put that up on YouTube shorts. We also throw some up on TikTok, on the Smosh TikTok. I would love to start staging some of them. Yes, please. Just fully out of context. We just set it up. We tell a friggin' lie. <laughs> nothing damaging, nothing bad, no, 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 but no. just something silly where people go, oh my God, They're what? Like, what? Oh and I want to see who's actually watching the episodes and who's just watching the short. Yes. So I thought of one. We can stage it right here. I want to stage. Let's stage it. I want to stage this. I had this idea of what if when I joined Smosh. Nowadays we're good, but what if when I joined Smosh, Ian and I didn't like each other? Oh, I love. What that. if we had a hard time working Which is with not each other? True. And over time we worked it out and we're better. But back in the day we we beefed. And we all hard. noticed. Not true at all. Not Let true. Let me establish for those listening to this podcast. This is fake. Fully fake. Ian and I have been good friends since I joined. Fake news. We never had had a problem. But let's let's, let's stage this and let's put this as a YouTube short. And, and for those who watch that, they have no idea. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it's uh, something people don't realize is that when I joined Smosh, Ian uh, and I did not get along at all. <gasps> no way. Not at all. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We just had very creative differences. I, anytime I pitched an idea, he would always shoot it shoot it down, and we'd, we'd get into arguments, and it would get personal. We were, we were, we would insult each other. 
we oftentimes could not be in the same room together. No. Yeah. You know what's crazy is when I joined, I always felt like when you walked into a room, like I felt like he was just like always walked out, like kind of avoided yeah. you. It lasted for years. No. It lasted for years. And I would say only recently has it gotten a little better, but you know, it's 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 just tough. And, and it shows you that on camera, we can really play it up. Yeah, but, you, because we're professionals. Yeah, but, you guys seem really good on camera. Yeah, but but yeah, we've it's 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 just an ongoing thing, and people don't realize. So he like doesn't like you yeah. at all. I would say probably we're, we're we are neutral to each other nowadays. But it used to be full on. I would say like a hate relationship. Oh my god! Like full on arguments yeah. in the office. That's so awkward. Yeah. I guess we can't have him on the podcast. Guess not. You can't laugh. To uh, we'll, see, that, that, we'll cut some part of that. We'll that cut some good. part of that. I think just like 15, be like, you guys 15 to 20 seconds that. of that. Oh think my God, I know. He's going to go, you guys can't do you that. You guys can't do that. He always laughs when he knows that he, you shouldn't be doing something. You guys can't do that. I'm trying to think, is there another one that we could do that's not as insane? Um uh, uh, we can't. Say okay, that. what if I say that I I was almost cast as um a lead in Victorious, or no, I was almost cast as Freddie Benson in iCarly. Oh, do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're <laughs> fucked. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, people don't. Uh, something I've I've never really talked about because it's a little. Of, sorry, let me let me start over. Let me try to think of how to say this. Chill out. Okay, okay. Something I don't talk about much is that I was runner-up to play Freddie Benson in iCarly. Yeah. <gasps> no. I, I auditioned. I got the callback. I got a second callback. I was in the room with Miranda, and we're, I was reading it. I, I felt really good about it, and then um, they ultimately decided that I wasn't the right look. And, really? but that's why in season one, they brought me back for that guest starring episode because they, they really liked me and they, they wanted to find a place for me on the show, but it was just the one episode, but, uh, it, things could have been really different had I been, you might not have been here. I probably wouldn't have been here. I we would have never probably met. I know I would have been Freddie Benson. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 that's Hollywood. You know, that's how it goes. Man. Yeah. I'm so sorry. It's all right. I'm so sorry that you have to be here now. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> that's a good that one. That might it, that might get a hit. Because it looks like we're like kind of like, okay, well, <laughs> I guess we should end the podcast. Now. I wonder if uh, let us know in the comments if this upsets you. Uh, I because I, I feel we can't we can't do a fake one where it's like we're leaving or someone's getting no fired. no no no. I don't want it to be anything bad, and I want it to be that if you watch the podcast, you then know that this is the thing we do. So this is only for the people who aren't actually watching. Actually watching. L yeah, let us know if this upsets you. <laughs> um, and we'll stop, maybe. And let us know what podcast you listen to or if you listen to the podcast that we mentioned and what you yeah. thought about it and if you think if Oprah I interrupts everything. <laughs> <laughs> let us know in the comments if Oprah has ever interrupted you. <laughs> um, Amanda, it's, it's really great to host this show with you. I love hosting this show with you. This was so fun. This is really great. I want to do this more often. Yeah, I want to do another check-in and read some comments and see where you're at with the splits yeah I'll, I'll give you guys updates yeah i will i would love that all right all right see you guys later see ya <laughs> we Bye. got you babe we got you babe man pretty good <laughs>